Excellent. So before we uh, we start this presentation, maybe just a few words about uh, Flora and I. I'm uh, Misha Benoliel, um, and I am a co-founder and CEO of the Nodal Project. Uh, super excited. It is a first uh, today of to doing this kind of uh, webinar live on Zoom with the community. Uh, and uh, yeah, super thrilled to be with you. And uh, I hope we're going to see even more people. And if it's a success, we will renew that and do it more often. Uh, Florent, you want to? Enjoy yourself briefly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you, Misha. I'm the VP of product. I'm also a French man like Misha. Uh, that's the only, uh, yeah, that's the only thing we have in common. I'm, I'm just kidding. Of course, we, we both love the project. I've joined the project about two years ago. Uh, it's, it's really fantastic to be part of this adventure. I'm responsible of the product and design team and also the mobile team. So we are uh, with Oksana, who is uh, one of our product manager, we are responsible for, for the mobile app, which is uh, the most visible piece of this uh, huge project. Nodal Network is a very large project, it's, uh, and, but you, I think, as uh, participants, probably you came because you were notified uh, on Twitter or on the app about the, about the conference, so you're probably a Nodal app user. So today, we are going to talk about uh, three main things. Um, so the first one is the app. We are going to make a, a small introduction about the app and what's coming next. Um, we are going to demonstrate for the first time the Nodal Explorer. So it's a new way for you to appreciate and see what the network uh, is about, its coverage uh, and very important KPIs about the, about the network. And last but not least, we'll talk about the project. Um, if you are a Nodal app user, you probably see a few things about it and we'll try to uh, make you understand the full scope of it so that you can come up with also your great ideas. Uh, we are really welcoming ideas and, and things. And of course, if you are a developer, also you can contact us and see how you can contribute. So I'll start with the app. What is the current goal of the Nodal app? I'm saying current, it's important because the Nodal app, the vision for the Nodal app is to become a super app. So super app is something that does a lot of different things. But currently, we are really looking at providing and offering the simplest experience to get into Web3 or crypto. That's really the current goal. Um, and there are, there are many projects in, in crypto, but if you have one project uh, that you can very quickly in 50 seconds uh, show a few things about crypto to a friend of yours, uh, we believe the Nodal app is, uh, is the best, or if it's not the best yet, we are really fighting and working hard to make it, to make it so. So how do we achieve that? First of all, it's an app that you are up and running in about 50 seconds. You have seen it yourself. You just download the app, you install it. There is no phone number, no email, which is being uh, asked. Uh, we believe strongly about this. I mean, there are a lot of projects that ask for your email. We think for a crypto project doesn't make any sense. It's always about self-hosting your wallet. And so the Nodal app is a self-hosted wallet. You are responsible, you are sovereign of your own wallet. And therefore, there's nothing that uh, anybody knows about you, only your public address. So you can start immediately. And we don't also ask for saving your passphrase uh, immediately. There are many wallets if you've tried, if you are a user of other network like Ethereum, many wallets, for instance, they ask for uh, 12 words, 24 words to be recorded even before you try the app. So you don't even know that you like the app, but you already have to store something, which we believe it doesn't make any sense once you, when you don't have anything. You don't have any uh, tokens on the wallet. So basically the wallet is not worth anything. As soon as you get some nodal, this is where you, we ask you to save your password because you have something to care about. And we will be more and more in the future. We think about a new ways to make sure that you understand uh, the value that you are storing and we will provide you more ways to uh, take responsibility of your nodal 
and of your NFTs. Then you have to wait and earn. So it's a, it's a project where you can earn with that. You don't have to buy anything. You can just receive uh, tokens from the network. And this is done fast. We have done something very quickly. Uh, we've done an update where you see your pending rewards, say pending because they are processed, they are calculated every 15 minutes. So you have a visibility of what you're going to receive. The payment, the actual payment is actually done still every four hours. But you are getting rewarded continuously and without any effort. Uh, I'm going to pass the screen to uh, to Misha so that he can actually yeah, show so his own uh, his own phone. Uh, so I'm going to uh, to share my screen uh, with the app uh, and uh, that way uh, guide you um, through the through the new stats system on the app, uh, which uh, is now uh, pretty advanced and also shows the proof of why you are earning uh, nodal tokens and and how uh, you are earning them. I'm trying to share the, my, my phone. It should happen in a few seconds. Uh, let's see uh, if, uh, okay. So it looks like it's working now. Uh, and everyone should be able to see the screen of my phone. So that's the main screen when you arrive on the Nodal app uh, today. As we can see, I earn uh, six Nodal tokens. Um, in, a, in the next slides, we're going to touch on the, the um, possibility to mint photo NFTs and uh, explain also all the things you can do with photo NFTs. We're going to touch on the contact card that you, you can uh, uh, generate on the phone if you want to share your address uh, and the app with your friends. So that's my contact card, for example. Um, and um, uh, let's go back to the stats and explain why basically and how we can earn the Noodle token. I'm going to take my rewards for the for the week. Um, you can see that I can have the total of Noodle I earned this week from my phone, so 91 Noodle so far. You have a time of availability. That's the time basically your node has been uh, uh, running uh, on the phone uh, and it's active like almost 60% of the time. And together with it, which is very similar, the time of availability of my Bluetooth radio. And the Bluetooth radio is part of the first set of missions that are running uh, these days on the nodal network. And we can touch on uh, one of the use, case, uh, use cases we are um, we have deployed and is running now live on the network and it's pretty successful. I'm going to touch on that. And before, for those who uh, wonder how to earn more tokens, uh, when you look at geographical coverage here, you see my numbers, 79%. Uh, what happens is every five minutes that basically this, uh, this um, coverage is updated. And if you happen to be in three different locations over the course of uh, 15 in, in, in 15 minutes. So we in, in within uh, three, three slots of five minutes, you are in three different locations. Then you have a chance to have a, a geographical coverage who could hit 300%. And that's a way, for example, for you to earn more, to earn more tokens. Um, let me uh, maybe uh, go back to my uh, main screen. Uh, and uh, we can touch on uh, one of the live use cases, I think, when uh, we jump maybe in the, in the Explorer with, uh, with Flora in a little bit. I'll uh, hand back the presentation to Flora. Okay. Yes. Yeah, thank you, Misha. So uh, you may want to uh, talk about the transaction part, Misha. Yeah, so if you want to send Nodal tokens to uh, contacts or friends, you can use uh, the QR code. So your QR code uh, reflects your, your public key and it's uh, uh, the public key of your wallet. It's an easy way to actually share your address. If you want to receive Nodal token, it's also an easy way with the QR code to scan someone else's address to send them Nodal token. Um, I recommend you set your contact card with uh, your name or username, whatever, or a pseudonym, you can use whatever um, basically uh, uh, wording you, you, you want for this. Uh, and you can also share your contact card with people who have the app, which is uh, something that will become more and more important as we, we give more uh, possibilities for interaction with other people in the community. 
you can send Nodo. You can also send NFTs uh, or photo NFTs you have taken with your friends. You can do that on Android freely today. You can mint NFT on iOS, but you, you will be able soon also to be able to share these NFTs or photo NFTs. Uh, and coming soon, we're going to add support for videos, which may reveal to become more and more important, I think, also with uh, the what's happening with AI. We need more and more proof uh, that the content we produce is actually authentic and real. Uh, and also something which uh, Florent and I are very excited. We call it uh, Places NFT. It means that if you go to a cafe or a place that you like to spend time by yourself or with your friends, you will be able to take photo of that place. It can be a retail, it can be a restaurant, it can be a hotel. And you will be able to have your photo uh, on the map, uh, on another app. So every other uh, member of the community can actually uh, check these photos. And the way you will do it is you will, you will lock uh, tokens uh, together with the photos that will be displayed on the map. Yeah, so one of the vision for Places NFT is indeed the, uh, the fact that you could own uh, a part of the digital replica of the physical world. So that's, as you may uh, remember, the project is a lot about the interaction between what we call Web3 and the physical world, which is the, the, the world we live in. Uh, in many Web2 uh, services, you actually don't own uh, the content that you create. You don't own the, the, the digital uh, replica. It's actually owned by a, a large company. We have the vision to actually reverse that. And in, in, when you are locally uh, in a specific place, you could actually recreate or even enrich the physical place with digital content. So that is part of the vision for Places NFT, which is, uh, as Misha said, is coming soon. What is also coming soon is, uh, is mission. We've talked a lot about, about it. It, it, uh, it is actually harder than we thought. Uh, we thought that we would be able to deliver it uh, easily and actually uh, the complexity of the of this uh, this id is uh, is very large so it was very difficult but we are making huge progress there um yeah misha you might want to uh, say a few words about the kind of missions that uh, are going to be possible yeah so today the you have a passive mission already running on your phone that's how you can earn token which is uh, the location of assets uh, using Bluetooth, uh, just for those of you who are familiar with uh, consumer um, devices like the Apple AirTag, uh, that's basically uh, what the network is doing today. It uh, used the radio Bluetooth and uh, the Bluetooth radio in the phone to locate uh, assets that have a Bluetooth tag attached to it. Our first customer is an insurance company. They are located in Europe. They have deployed uh, these big beacons, so they are much bigger than an Apple AirTag. Uh, they go into cars, uh, and uh, they have that deployed on 50,000 cars in Europe, and they use the network of Nodal, uh, so people with the app or the insurer's app or partners who use her library to locate these vehicles. So if you walk by one of these cars, basically, automatically the encrypted identity of the beacon is captured, it's tagged with time and location, and it is sent to the insurance company. And uh, the, the, the big win is the, that specific insurance company already started to locate vehicles that had been stolen, and they were recovered thanks to the Nodal community. So we're pretty excited to see this successful uh, use case being deployed. Soon, you're going to see new type of smart missions where uh, actually it can be a media company asking one of you to go to an event and, for example, take a photo or take a video and you will be paid through the app for completing that mission. That's an, another example of, of mission, which is more active. So you will need to actually accept the mission and take it and execute it to be able to receive the reward in Nodo. Uh, it will be much more important than when you just do basic discovery in a passive mode. Uh, it could be a marketing company asking you also to go in a specific location to take a photo of a product and check the price. Uh, so all these kind of new missions will be uh, will be arriving in the app uh, at some point. Uh, I'm super excited by uh, one idea we, we had some time ago, which I think is going to be uh, super exciting, is when you can send a mission to one of your friends, which could be, for example, that uh, you ask your friend to uh, 
spend a minimum of, minimum of time running per week. And if they complete that mission, they can you, you are ready to, to send them more tokens or they can unlock a prize in nodal token. So that these are examples of the kind of mission that will be coming to the network. Now let's jump into the nodal explorer, which is the, the thing that you've never seen before. What is the nodal explorer? It's about visualizing the current state of the network. Um, so first of all, we want to say thank you to the community because the community is really everywhere. Uh, we now have 460 monthly active nodes with more than 800 token holders, 100k uh, token holders, and back to 20,000 active accounts. Let us show the, the nodal explorer. So it looks like this. So it's uh, there are millions of points to make sure that these uh, things work. So you can see some interesting facts about the um, about the network. I will actually walk you through some interesting aspect of the network. But first, um, let me tell you the 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 way the next floor is structured. You have two parts. You have the map and you have the network. On the map. You will have the number of monthly active ties. We use a three coordinate system because it's actually very uh, it's very good. All the H3, even um, even they have all the same uh, shape, they also have all the same surface across the globe. So it really takes into account the fact that uh, we live in a in a sphere. Um, you also have the the countries that have been covered. Um, and you will also know the average nodes per active time. So how many nodes have activated one particular piece? When it's actually dark, it means nobody went there. And when it's this uh, more bright color, it means that it's been uh, covered by a user. So um, then also you have the monthly total surface in a kilometer square. Uh, hopefully, these things also grow months over months. Let's go to the network uh, part. So you have two pieces, right? You have the map, you have the network. N the network gives you more, um, let's say, basic KPIs about the nodal network. So for instance, you have the, the number that we just provide you before, uh, for 460,000 uh, monthly active nodes. Here, for instance, you will see the active nodes on a, on a compounding basis. So for instance, you see that the network is actually growing regularly um, day after day. Um, then you also have the new nodes that have been activated this month. Of course, you have new nodes coming and also nodes going silent. So this is compensated. So it doesn't necessarily mean that we the network is growing at that speed, but uh, just give you a sense of the, the things that are coming online yeah, for, for, all for the long. time. And here, yeah, yeah. There is a, there is a question actually that's uh, kind of related yeah. to the nodes on the network from yeah. uh, Luis uh, Guzman who asked, uh, what is the kind of work we are doing with Cisco? And uh, so I just want to answer live to that question since we are on nodes. So yeah. we, uh, Cisco, uh, we have a partnership with Cisco Meraki who builds these uh, big routers for, I mean, Wi-Fi, but also they have uh, uh, Bluetooth routers. Uh, and uh, any of this uh, infrastructure, basically a campus or a company, a university using these Cisco Meraki routers have the possibility to become uh, basically a node and participate uh, uh, to the network to locate uh, also uh, assets the same way a phone uh, would do it. And that's just to answer the, the question from Jose Luis uh, uh, Guzman. Thank you for asking the question, uh, Jose. Gracias. Okay, so on the network, you have the, 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 the part which are related to nodes. We might even provide even more details about the nodes and their presence and so on. But right now, this is the way it's done. You have KPIs about the token itself. So the price of the token, the rewards being allocated, uh, the total supply and the average rewards per node. Um, again, it's on a monthly basis. Okay, so it's not on a daily basis. 
You can have data also on a daily uh, on a daily basis by just looking at this. So you can look at that like that. Okay. So then you have the on-chain activity, which is also very interesting. For instance, the number of new wallets, the transfer, uh, the number of transactions that are being uh, executed on the nodal network on the nodal chain. You have the NFTs which are being minted, and also the um, the transfer of no the the amount of nodal transfer inside um, inside the chain. So that's all the parameters that we are showing. Just wanted to show a few things about the map, which I always believed was super fascinating. So the country which is the most dense today, um, it's France. So uh, it's quite logical because there there is a they, is a, a commercial um, the application there with uh, with our insurance uh, company, so it's pretty dense and it's not just urban. You can see you can see pretty much uh, all the different routes. It's pretty interesting to uh, to see the, the the density. It's quite it's quite crazy how dense the network is there. Um, also, yeah, what's interesting is uh, if you saw uh, when I was on my map on the on the app. Uh, the, the actually the, the the territory the map is is divided in uh, in tiles and if you zoom on the explorer when it is live I mean uh, and Florent can show now you will see that uh, each piece of uh, land basically uh, corresponds to a tile. Florent, can you zoom to the level of the of the tile? Yeah, yeah, you can. You, we can zoom at a at the tile level, so it looks like this, right? So it looks like you have one tile here. So you will see monthly active tile. You will see the uh, the rewards due to this tile. If you click there, it's nothing. It's it's not activated. Of course, the tiles which are mainly activated are the uh, let's say the, the 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 urban area, but also the route. So here is a road. So the road has been activated because the a nodal app uh, user was was driving uh, on this road. You can also see the UK is actually pretty dense, but of course, mainly urban. Uh, you have the Netherlands, which is not bad. I'm always complaining. I'm really sad that uh, Germany is not so dense. Uh, you have Ber Berlin is pretty good, but uh, the rest of Germany is not that is not that dense in the uh, rural area. What is, um, of course, the US, what is also good is the US is also pretty good also of like really on the, uh, let's say, on the coast and all the urban area. Uh, in South America, we have Brazil, which is quite good. And uh, in um, Argentina, which is mainly uh, centered around the, um, the big cities. Unfortunately, uh, Africa is not really dense. Uh, we have also some good things happening in, uh, in India. Japan is also pretty nice. And I always was fascinated about looking at the map where I see, okay, what is the northern part of uh, the nodal community and you could see for instance i found this quite fun, quite funny like in norway i mean of course everybody knows about oslo and bergen which are more in this place but you can see that wow very far above the arctic circle we also have a community there or maybe a community might be a big words might be just two or three users but we have two or three users that's pretty cool it trumps pretty cool. yeah i think it's pretty cool and uh, and you can look at okay how does it look like actually it's a, it looks like it's a very beautiful place by the way so you see this uh it's kind of place that uh we are uh, the the network is the is, is working over there so it's pretty cool we also have the network so on the top north, the network is there. Also, uh, in the in the uh, in the south, you can look at Argentina, and we have this city that everybody has heard of, which more well known that this uh, Norway counterpart, which is Ushuaia. So even in Ushuaia, we uh, we we can see that there is a community over there. Uh, so the community is really everywhere. It's not everywhere. In terms of density, unfortunately, there are all many places where it's not uh, activated, but the, the the community is available in more than 200 countries. So you can really see the vivacity of the network. Of course, it includes New Zealand and uh, Australia as well. So we're pretty excited about the the community. It's it's only below 500k uh, nodes. 
But those nodes are moving. And of course, the incentive of the uh, network is to get them moving more and more. So we can and, uh, jump uh, right back. I think yes. it's also important to remind everyone that the more friends you bring into the network for the use case of uh, um, basically activating the, the Bluetooth radio and using the Bluetooth radio and the phones, the more people join, obviously, the more value there is, the more use case we can deploy. So the more uh, professional and business customers we can serve. Uh, so it's very important, actually, to if, if you really like the project and uh, to actually talk about, about it around you and, and, and share the app with people, because that's the best way you can reinforce your community. And by doing that, you also reinforce uh, the use cases and uh, the opportunities to generate more rewards and, and have new missions coming for, for everyone. So the, the Nodal so Network is really a swarm of computers. Um, if you are a long time crypto fan, you probably understand uh, I mean, how the Ethereum network works. Uh, basically, it's computers in the cloud being able to, uh, to execute uh, smart contracts. Uh, we believe that the, the mobile platform and the smartphone is, is actually super interesting and, and hasn't been leveraged uh, in, 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 in our industry. And, and, and why it is so exciting is because every one of us has a smartphone. So it's uh, almost, uh, I think, uh, six to seven billion smartphones that are out there uh, and can be leveraged uh, by the Nodal Network. And, uh, and when you participate, you can actually share some of the capacity and resources of your phone with the community and be uh, re rewarded for it uh, and, and also be able to do things through that community. So uh, next slide is... Uh, uh, so up until now, mainly in the Web3 and decentralized space, we've been used to uh, have uh, this kind of networks uh, used in the cloud. Uh, and, uh, and, and now we are bringing that to the, to the smartphone uh, platform and infrastructure. And, uh, and uh, we call that a, a, a swarm computer when you can access uh, tens or hundreds, potentially billions of uh, smartphones, then you create this mega computer, which is called a smart computer. And that can be used to, to compute, to perform tasks. And it, it's pretty unique because smartphones have uh, things that are actually uh, unique to compared to general computers that are in the cloud. Uh, smartphones have a, a camera. Uh, that's why we, you have the possibility uh, in the app uh, to access the camera, to take a photo or mint a, an NFT. Uh, they have sensors like accelerometer, pressure, uh, temperature. Um, and uh, and then they, they have a real person behind the smartphones and they are mobile. Uh, so all these things basically make the smartphone uh, a pretty unique platform compared to, uh, to, to general computers. I, um, I wanted to add something, Isha, yeah. uh, maybe to make the... So why did we make this analogy of swarm computer and cloud computing? When you put computers in common, you get the new emergent properties. Um, so a cloud computer is way more performant than a computer. It's also more reliable, okay? Uh, if you hard disk, if your hard drive of your computer dies, uh, then it dies. There, there is no, nothing, you, you, need the, you need it to back up the data, otherwise it's lost. Cloud computer really has way more reliability. It's also flexible, it's elastic. So uh, it is a kind of a new kind of abstraction and you have new emergent properties that came when you put software to manage an infrastructure. And this is what we believe with Swarm Computing. By putting millions of smartphones in common, then you get new emergent properties, which is exactly what we are, what we are doing. And the, 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 this stuff is very important, like what um, Misha said. We have a human being which is always in front of a smart computer, almost. Uh, this is also very interesting for many use cases that could be uh, that could be leveraged. So really, the net, the nodal network is a swarm computer which is decentralized. And if you are also into uh, the uh, the crypto space uh, quite a lot, you may have heard of DPIN, which is decentralized physical infrastructure network. So it's a new kind of decentralized physical infrastructure network. Do uh, we have uh, often some questions about okay, but Swarm Computer we've never heard of. Uh, are there other examples of Web2 Swarm Computers? 
yes, there, yes, there is obviously. Uh, uh, we can say that Apple find my when they when when uh, the, the the swarm of iPhones are used to locate an air tag is a kind of swarm computer. It's just uh, an application specific swarm computer. So it's, it is only used in that in that case to locate air tags. Um, but Android phones, for instance, are used to compute traffic that are, is then displayed on Google Maps. So we can say the swarm of Android phones is a kind of application specific swarm computer, which is only used to enhance the experience of Google Maps users. What we are trying to do with the Nodal Network is a swarm computer, which is programmable and decentralized. It's very, very difficult. That's why this project is sometimes not understood because it's a, it's very ambitious and very difficult to achieve. So uh, what uh, you have heard of Smart Mission and because we are always showing you uh, how Smart Mission will look like in the Nodal app, but basically a uh, Smart Mission is an app on this smart computer, in, in, on this uh, swarm computer. So you would have, for instance, a business who wants to do an order. So the order would be sent on chain. Uh, that would be called a smart mission. Then the mission is taken by the supply, which is the user of the nodal apps, or could be also users of other apps, which have the nodal SDK. And then the supply on this marketplace. So marketplace, you have supply and demand. So the supply in this case is the nodal app users or the nodal SDK users. They execute the service, and the service is about capturing real data about the reward. And uh, so that's really the main thing is like capturing data about the reward has a lot of value for some business and could also have some value for some other users. I think uh, we, uh, uh, if you, yeah, Florent, if you want to finish on this line, we're going to take some of yeah, the questions. We, here and we are. We are going to answer the question. I think it's uh, it is indeed uh, time. Yeah, I started to uh, answer uh, by writing directly and answering uh, people, but I think we have some questions that can be interesting for everyone. Uh, what about India? Yeah, it can be a good market for them. I think we have presence in India. We would like to have more presence there. Uh, that's a deal as he is asking that question. Uh, yeah, in India, India is uh, is one of the. Uh, what what is I mean you will be able to see that and maybe we provide on the Nodal Explorer once we are able to display the data you will be able to see which country is growing faster and so no, India is growing quite fast and it's a it's a superb uh, superb committee that we have there of course be like when you compare France to India France is very small it's just like smaller than an Indian state so uh, it's easier to uh, to get density into a smaller country than in, in India, but uh, of course, hopefully, we hope the Indian community will, will keep growing there and we keep uh, inviting their friends. Yeah, the Sayan was asking if we could show the map of India. I don't know if it's uh, possible. Yeah, of course, of course we can. Cities. Uh, uh, people will while, be while you do that, thing. I'm going to answer to Rebinda. So we on the decks. We are not present on decks yet. I think we are. Uh, exploring possibility to be on our first DEX uh, since we now have a, an integration, XM integration with uh, Moonbeam. Uh, so we are thinking to uh, potentially go on Stellar Swap. Uh, so that should answer the question from True Binda. Um, yeah, I'm going to so just. So, how to increase uh, the rewards? Rami, I think if you looked at the presentation earlier on the app, you, I gave some tips on how you can increase these rewards for the passive rewards. Um, I can say a few things, uh, Misha. So let's look at, uh, so India looks like this. So you see it's very concentrated into your urban area. So you have uh, New Delhi, which is quite, uh, looks quite dense there. You have Mumbai as well. You have uh, Bangalore over there. Uh, it's it's really, but the, the rural part is, is quite empty. Again, you know, it's quite logical that this is the case. Uh, we really hope that uh, it gets it gets more more dense uh, in the future. But it's really centered around. There's a good question still on here. India, mm -hmm. uh, from India, mm -hmm. from uh, Ram Prasad, who says he, he wants to buy five phones to run the Nodal Hotspot app. Uh, how to divide them? Uh, and uh, so yes, if for those of you who don't know, we also have so we have the Nodal Wallet app, but we have the Nodal Hotspot app where that enables you to recycle other Android phones. 
and you can link these funds to your main account on the through the Nodal wallet and be able to earn more rewards by having more hotspots uh, running. Um, I think the 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 map on the explore will help you to understand what are the places. I mean, if you are able to position your hotspot in uh, in empty spots, that's the best way to earn. If you want if you want to earn more as a Nodal app user. Uh, you should try to find places which have not been discovered because basically the rewards in this H retail are not divided. Uh, so uh, so that's the best way. And we will provide more more ways for you to understand where to locate the uh, the nodes. Uh, but of course, if if you are not all, just moving helps you anyway get more more rewards. Um, it's it's but it, this is capped. You you need to understand every every day, every every four hours. There's a there's a maximum amount of nodal which is always uh, being uh, which is being uh, created and then uh, divided upon all the participants. That's the way you, you cannot max this out. It's always fixed. It's pretty pretty much the same with some of the networks. Like like the Bitcoin reward is always the same. And it's only the the winner who gets it here. It's actually shared among the participants, but at least there is a cap there. To maximize your own uh, your own uh, rewards, you need to find places which have not been visited over the last uh, reward event, and then you get, uh, of course, you get you will get more. Um, so, of course, if you want to have five phones, uh, you can definitely do that. Once you have active missions, you will see that it's even active missions will probably reward more because it will be paid by businesses and it will not be paid by the network. I'm going to continue on questions. So in there, I'm impressed with what you guys are doing. We'd love to read more about the tech you guys uh, used. Can you share some more info, please? Uh, I would be more than happy to contribute back to the Nodal community. I'm from India. So uh, in there, I mean, if you go on the website, nodal.com, uh, in the footer, you can find links to the white paper, you can find links to the smart mission vision paper. You can find links to the GitHub. Uh, we are opening progressively uh, access to the to the repos, uh, and uh, we will also uh, create a program with bounties for people to participate actively in the network. Um, so the nodal documentation is pretty dense. Uh, uh, you can see that. So you can docs.nodal.com. Thank you, Isham. And uh, uh, you can see a lot of things there. And if you want to understand how the reward system works, it's actually described uh, sometimes. Yeah, there's a little bit of math, but uh, you can understand the way the way system works. And you can understand about the network, about the chain, about the token, about a lot of things there. Yeah. Let's go to the next okay. question. I see Mary Waters in the US. She has a hotspot app. Uh, but it doesn't show it's connected. Uh, okay, well, there you can send Mary some uh, message to the support. Um, the another hotspot app is being updated, it's very new. Uh, sometimes it doesn't work on all phones. Uh, we are really working to improve that. Um, and uh, so it should be working, I would say, uh, at some point. And it takes time to actually support all the models of phones. Um, then uh, well, I have, we have a lot of thank you here message. I want to uh, see if there's any other big uh, interesting questions because we only have a few minutes left, seven exactly. There, um, there's a question. I think there's a question which is also like Luis uh, uh, asked a question about staking in the future. The the it's important to understand. Yeah, so it is a recurring question. We understand because people look it from their side and say, okay, staking is a way to get some yield on my token. And this is the way they think. But usually staking is also, it's it's a way for uh, being appointed uh, a validator or some network. In our, in our case, because the nodal network uh, is supported by Polkadot, there's actually no technical need to, uh, to do staking. Uh, so will there be way to get yield on token? Probably, uh, it's, it's it, it probably some things will be developed by by third party developers or with Dex that could provide some yield. We we don't we are not aware of that. But technically, the the staking for for the sake of staking is uh, is not part of the roadmap. We understand it was actually talked about before because before um, nodal uh, the nodal chain was a para chain. It was not clear. Uh, uh, how the relationship with Polkadot, the Polkadot uh, chain was. 
once once he became uh, a parachain, it was understood, but that it was actually not useful to provide staking. So technically, there is no reason for doing staking. Would there be other ways for for people to get yield on there? Yeah, probably. Uh, probably some developers might find ways. Uh, it's not a it's not a focus of the of the the main development team here. Uh, they are. Jose, who uh, was asking if uh, we can see some lists of, uh, uh, of of PR news. I think we have one from this morning on Coin Telegraph where we announced the open sourcing of our nano computer, uh, which is basically a sticker designed for a sticker that has a Bluetooth radio and many sensors. Um, uh, so you can check on, on Coin Telegraph. There is one uh, from a couple of hours ago. Uh, thank you, Jose Luis. Uh, uh, someone is asking if they uh, make uh, connect their phones to a larger Bluetooth antenna. If it, I mean, if you have a way to hack into that and actually increase the range of uh, uh, your Bluetooth uh, scanning, uh, there's a possibility you may see more uh, devices and. Uh, um, and yeah, so that's possible. Uh, that's Chris who was asking that question. Uh, there is also like what, yeah. what are the features uh, to buy Nodo from in-app purchase? I mean, this is something that is being uh, explored. Uh, of course, always to provide the best user experience, and it will not be done by it will not be done by the Nodo team. It will be done by a third-party partner who is expert in this, and we will basically the Nodo app will be integrated with uh, such a partner. So this is something that we are uh, actually uh, exploring. Uh, what kind of data Nodo collect? The data that 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 uh, that will be collected is actually being it will be uh, very clear for the user what data are collected um, and uh, through the smart mission interface. So you will see, okay, you, you are going to be rewarded for this data, uh, and we will expose this in the Nodo Lab. So people will be able to say, hey, I'm joining the mission, so the data will be collected, or I'm not joining, and no data will be collected. Right now, there is actually. Uh, the data are only collected for in, uh, for instance, in France for 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 the tracking of cars, and that's pretty much it. Um, yeah, let would me. Would that uh, work when we only have a few minutes left before this stops? So uh, I just want to. So some people ask when the network explorer would be live and available to everyone. Uh, I think we are working on uh, basically on this. Uh, Concomitantly, we are planning to redo the website. It's very likely that both will be released at the same time. Florent, do you have a, some estimate or uh, the, the, the roadmap? Uh, sorry, the, the, the release of the Explorer. Uh, I was just reading yes. the questions. So the reading of the Explorer is going to be done in uh, either tomorrow or the day after. So it's, it's like coming. It's so, coming that, so that's the answer, guys. Uh, thank you for all of you for joining us today. We are super excited to uh, to have you uh, participate uh, and ask questions and be able to show you what we are working on. Uh, it looks like uh, we've got a lot of you today, so it's very likely that we will do that more often. Um, but thank you for joining today, guys. Uh, and we will upload the, the recording of this uh, as well. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, thank everyone. Thank you very much.